Hi there, Halton. I'm Jason Agnew, your friendly neighborhood anchorman, the host of Halton News on your TV Kojiko. And as you can see, I'm currently not in a studio. I am at my home quarantining because I'm COVID-19 positive. Now, I'm okay. I've consulted my family doctor. However, when I got diagnosed, I found myself to have a whole bunch of questions and I thought maybe I could help the community by doing a segment using myself as an example and getting some of these questions answered that you may have as well if you're COVID positive or if you're feeling symptoms. So I placed a call to Joseph Brandt Hospital to chat with infectious disease specialist, Dr. Dale Kalina, who joins me now. Good afternoon, Dr. Kalina. Hi, how are you? Well, you know, I'm COVID positive. We talked off air about it and it happens. And I think it's happening to a lot of people out there, which is why I wanted to do this segment. I'm hoping you can provide a little bit of advice, though we know everyone should be checking with their doctor, first of all. But one of the questions that I got uh, once I tested positive and people found out about it was, hey, do you know when you got it? And I was just like, ah. I have no idea when I got it, but I know I did feel symptoms on a Wednesday afternoon. And I'm wondering with that, is there a way I can kind of trace back to know when I may have come in contact with it? Yeah, so first of all, I'm happy you're feeling okay, all things considered. Uh, and you're very right. This is advice that I'm providing to you and answers that I'm providing to you. But when you have questions, if you yourself have COVID, uh, if you're watching this, it is so important to talk to a medical professional as well about yourself. Um, now, you had symptoms starting on that Wednesday. So what public health would say is that it's important to trace back for two days before that. So all the people that you've been exposed to, so people that um, you've been in a room with, particularly without a mask, uh, and particularly if you've been spending a longer length of time in that room, for those two days before you started to develop symptoms, that's where they would trace back if they had the capacity to do that nowadays. But the reality is one of the biggest differences that I've noticed between the Omicron wave and previous waves that we've had is that it's so tough to pinpoint where you've got it. Because really, this time, it's just so much more infectious than it has been before that it's been really tough to pinpoint where that infection is coming from. So I, as I mentioned, felt uh, a little something on Wednesday, but in order to come back to Canada, since I was traveling on Thursday, complete with a runny nose and some coughing, I had to take a PCR test within 72 hours of returning home. I tested negative on that test. So I kind of thought, oh, I must have just picked up a cold somewhere because they do still exist outside of COVID. How is it possible, though, that I ended up testing positive at the airport here when 48 hours before I was negative? Yeah, so I think there's a whole bunch of different scenarios that could have happened. So the scenario that ended up being true, that you ended up having COVID, you likely did start to develop those symptoms of COVID. And the test requires uh, enough of the virus to be replicating in your system to be able to cross that threshold of positivity. Mm -hmm. So maybe you just hadn't quite crossed that threshold at the beginning. And that's something that we call sensitivity of any of the tests. The reality is, no test is 100% sensitive. Uh, these tests are very, very good. They're upwards of 90, 90, uh, 95, 99% sensitive. But we know as you first get the disease, there's probably a little bit of a lead time or a window period where you haven't quite developed some of those antibodies and you haven't quite developed enough of the virus replicating in your system to have the PCR test positive. Now, one of the alternates, it could have been another infection. There are cold, there are flus, not much flu actually, but, but colds that are going around right now too. Uh, or it could have been more than one thing at a time. I know from uh, especially children that I know uh, who are coming down with infections, not just nowadays, but going to daycare, you can get more than one virus at a time, unfortunately. Uh, so there's a bunch of options. Uh, I think in your case, you probably were just a little bit before the time period where the test was positive. All right, so I tested positive on a Saturday and I was told to isolate for 10 days thereafter by the federal government. What happens though, if at the end of that 10 days, I'm still feeling congested, still coughing, should I continue to isolate? Yeah, so if you're still feeling symptoms at the end of that, really you shouldn't be rejoining society. You should be isolating past that point. Um, and where I think about that is that it does seem that the virus is likely still replicating and, 
And maybe there's a higher risk of you being infectious at that time. Mm. That isolation period after you test positive is primarily to protect those around you, right? So what we want to do is decrease the risk as much as we can of transmitting the virus to other people. And so what we do is we say that you're likely infectious for around 10 days. Everyone's a little bit different. You're fine at day 10 if you don't have any symptoms. And I think that's pretty good advice. So uh, this one baffled me. My girlfriend traveled with me. She lives with me. She sleeps with me. We were on vacation. We may have had some close contact on vacation. She has tested negative throughout. This blows my mind. How is that possible to be so close to someone but still remain negative? You know, you're not the only one who's experiencing that as well. I've, I've met a number of similar situations and been involved in other similar cases. And the reality is, particularly for people who have been vaccinated, uh, and especially people who have received the third dose of the vaccine with respect to Omicron right now, is that we know that with all the vaccines, you're less likely to transmit the infection on. So, I mean, it's very difficult to tell, but perhaps if you had been entirely unvaccinated, it would have been a much higher likelihood that your girlfriend would have been infected and everyone else around you would have been infected before you even had the chance to isolate. But this is one of the great things about vaccines is that they don't 100% prevent you from getting the disease. They don't 100% prevent you from transmitting the disease, but they do dramatically reduce the risk of both of those things. Hmm. Okay, so my girlfriend's been told to isolate for 14 days because she is around me. At the seven day mark, she had a rapid test. She still tested negative. Um, can she still catch the virus from me if I'm still showing symptoms? You're nodding your head yes. Yeah, she can. And that's the disappointing hmm. part. Uh, so it is far less likely after that 10 day mark, far less likely despite symptoms. And I, the way I like to think about that is, when you have a cold, you often have a cough for weeks afterwards, but you're not infectious anymore. And that's mostly what we've seen with people with COVID after day 10. The reality is you are far less infectious based on what we've seen over the course of the past two years in a lot of literature and a lot of research. But your girlfriend might still be within that incubation period. So the length of time between when she may have actually contracted the virus, been exposed to it, and then contracted it, and when she herself develops symptoms. And so that can extend for up to 14 days from the last time you were infectious. And there's just, there's so many questions upon questions with, with COVID and how everyone reacts to it so differently. So my final one is I did go through the, the traditional uh, loss of senses of smell and taste. Now, it actually came late for me because I had had it for about five days, symptoms for about five days before losing my two senses, I've got about 50% back within 48 hours. But for this particular symptom, for someone going through it that has lost these senses, um, what is the period that they could or should return? Everyone's different. Uh, and that's the, that's the toughest part about COVID, that of course you can have almost any condition and any duration. I mean, people sometimes are entirely asymptomatic and of course it can be fatal as well. So the loss of taste and smell, they go together a lot of the time. And you're right, especially in earlier waves, it was one of the earliest symptoms that people were seeing. And although it's a little bit less common nowadays with Omicron, people are still experiencing that just like you have. I think for most people, it does return within a few weeks, uh, but some people it does take a little bit longer. Uh, so, you know, if there's anything, uh, if, if anything that you don't like to eat and uh, you need to show that off, I mean, I guess now is your opportunity, but it should come back eventually. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I'm not a guy who enjoys seafood too much. So I'm going to go on an all seafood diet now. <laughs> I mean, that's an option. <laughs> that's an option. Listen, Dr. Kalina, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I really appreciate it for the, uh, for the insight and, uh, and hopefully I'm just, uh, getting out of this isolation, getting back into the world. I hope so too. I hope you're feeling better soon, Jason. Thank you very much. 
All right, Halton, hopefully that was helpful to all of you out there. I think the moral of the story is if you have tested positive or are feeling symptoms, check with your family doctor for more advice. As for me, I'm done my quarantine as of tomorrow, so I'm going to be back live in studio hosting Halton News live at 5. If you have a story, something about the Halton community, we are always looking for stories. You can submit them to Halton News at Kojiko.com. But I'll be talking at you tomorrow night live at 5 on Halton News. Don't you dare miss it.